Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Well, hello, Mrs. Farmer. Where did you come from? You know me. If you snuck food, up on uh -huh, me. Uh-huh, I snuck up. <laughs> All right. Today, we're in a cabin. Mm -hmm. We can barely make it here because of the rain. That's right. We would like to be cooking outside. That's yucky and rainy. Over the campfire. Mm -hmm. And we just can't. It breaks our heart. But you know what? Cameras aren't made for the rain. That's right. Now, something I like, something you like, mm -hmm. you like more than I do, is meatloaf. Right. I do love meatloaf. So, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? We're, We're going to smoke cook some on? stuff. We're going to smoke some stuff. <laughs> and you know what? You can cook anything on a smoker. I have a couple smokers. I'm playing with the Traeger now. And I'm finding this interesting. And it does mm -hmm. things that I really like because I can get the temperature up there. Mm -hmm. Up to 450. Right. A lot of smokers you can't do there. You know, you're talking 275 mm -hmm. max. So if you have a smoker that you can get up to those higher temperatures, wow, you can do a chicken, which we did not too long ago. Take a look at this. Hands off. Poor Holly. Listen to Holly. <laughs> I hope the mic's picking up and you can hear Kelly's spoiled brat Holly. She knows Kelly's here. No, she's here. She's waiting okay. for a snack. <laughs> but where was I? I like to get those temperatures up. If you want to cook something at 350, mm -hmm. 350 is 350, right. whether it's in your oven or whatever. But if it's in a smoker, it's going to have a smoke taste. 350 is 350, Dutch oven, oven, right. smoker. So I started thinking, we're going to see Nick this weekend. Mm -hmm. And you know what Nick likes? Jerky. He loves jerky. Yes, he does. You know, and I'm not knocking any particular brands or thing, but you look, start looking at some of the ingredients in jerky. Pretty scary. Not good. Pretty scary. A lot of nitrates, nitrates, whatever. So I'm gonna make some today. Now we've already used all our venison up mm -hmm. for other things. You can eat, this is, this is my venison recipe. We're gonna use it. We got some beef, but say you want a piece of jerky. That's the best jerky ever. I like that a would lot. Would you like one, Mrs. Farmer? I would, it's really good. All right, look at that. Wow. It looks like jerky from the store. Is this all you have left from the other day? You ate a lot of it, didn't you? Mm. When you don't have a kitchen, wow. or if you just want some quick protein, it's so handy to have something around. You know what's in it? Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh. That's really good, really tasty. All right, let's get to it. This is so simple. Now, you talk about continuing patterns. You see things here, you see it there. You think about the brines that I use for my turkey. Right. Or my smoked trout. What do I use? Soy, mm -hmm. Worcestershire, garlic, black pepper, kosher salt. Very similar, garlic. Right. So what's happening now? Very similar to that. This is a marinade, or a brine, whatever you want to call it, that we're going to soak our jerky in. Maybe bottom rounds for sale. Mm -hmm. Could you do deer? Maybe you've got some deer meat left like over. Roast or That's steaks. jerky. Yeah. Look, cut them in about a quarter inch. The great thing about it, if you do with beef, which we're doing tonight, is go to your butcher and say, hey. Now, this is going to shrink up. Remember that. Go to your butcher and say, hey, I want a quarter inch. And some of these are a little bit thicker than a quarter. But when I like jerky, I don't want it to be brittle and right. break off and get stuck in between my teeth. I like it to have some moisture in it. This is a quick turnaround, too. Mm -hmm. After the marinade, two hours in your smoker, regardless of what smoker you have, Two hours at 225. You got a snack. Are you kidding me? It was good. We're going to take that, Nikki, and we're just going to split these in half. Okay. Now, this cute little knife that we've been using, everybody said, what kind of knife is that? It's not a sponsor. It's not anybody. We just found these in Stanford. There's a little store down there that carries Rada. Now, this is That's stuff right. you can find all over the place. R-A-D-A. -A. Usually, I'll do a double of this. This is a half a recipe. We've already done one batch. We did one the other night. And Nick likes to eat a lot. There'll so be enough for him is, to eat this a This is enough for him to eat at one setting. <laughs> yes, sir. So, Mrs. Farmer, if you will, let's go three quarters of a cup Worcestershire. Okay. Our soy sauce, three quarters. Okay. Now, if I was doing it in my oven and I wanted to get a little more smoky taste, liquid smoke, I would put a little bit. Of, I'm going to go ahead and put some in there anyway. Just a tad, just about that much exactly. All right, so we're getting our salty base in there. Now, let's come in with some sweet. Okay. And I want three tablespoons of, I'm going to put light brown sugar in here. All right, then I'm going to come back with one tablespoon of kosher salt. You got the salt, you got the soy, you got the Worcestershire, mm -hmm. so you've got some good preserving agents in there. Again, though, I'm not saying take this out on the trail with you and, and, and you know walk to Canada and back, and you're just going to be fine. This is to eat. Put it in the refrigerator, take it out as you need it. Right. All right, from there, we're going to go to one teaspoon of onion powder and one teaspoon of garlic powder. Right. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Last time, I did just a shake. I, I covered the top. Now, some people would probably use a teaspoon. I didn't do that. This is probably a quarter of a teaspoon. 
Then with black pepper, okay. let's go two tablespoons. Now that's gonna bring some heat in right there. If you wanted to, and I do, mm -hmm. usually this would be done if you're making more of a Korean teriyaki, but I like a little texture and I like the look of just a little bit of sesame seed. I like sesame seed. Yeah, it's a little crunch. Yeah, I like that. Guess what, Ms. Farmer? What? We're there. Looks good, it smells good. It's got a good smell to it. Now that may seem like a lot of black pepper, but since they caught Glenn, <laughs> there's, there's some more pepper in the market now, thank goodness. Yeah, that's right, that's good. You know what, now, now look at here. Now you know that's gonna shrink up some. Mm -hmm. 225 degrees. We're just gonna drop this in here. We're gonna let it get acquainted. We're gonna let it get amongst itself. But then, Mrs. Farmer, if you will, go ahead and start stirring that up. Ready? And then, of course, we're just gonna take a plastic bag. And there's different amounts of time. This pulls this salt in pretty quick. I usually go for about, I don't know, four or five hours. And that's adequate to me. You can let it go all night if you want. Ooh, look at that piece. I want that piece when it That's goes big out. piece. All right, let's take that and let's pour that in that bag. Ready? Now, let's take that bag, Nikki, mash it all up together. And we're gonna stick that in the fridge okay. for four to five hours. 225, get it warmed up, get mm -hmm. it heated up, get it ready to go. Pop them in there, lay them on the grill. You want your grill to be open, just right. lay them on your surface. 225 degrees, here's the great part. Two hours. Two hours you at 225, snack, yeah. you've got a snack. So, there's breakfast. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just that easy. Nothing to it, ooh, it's sitting there looking at me. I could eat every bit of that, and I probably will throughout the show. Okay. But Kelly's <laughs> gonna tell me to stop chewing and talk. So, meatloaf. Mm -hmm. I thought, okay, let's let's take meatloaf and do it on my terms. I want it to have a good smoky barbecue-y flavor. You like that, don't you? So let's get the jerky stuff out of the way, pull the meatloaf stuff up, and I'm gonna show you a barbecue meatloaf that's out of this world. Yummy. So, tonight, after we get this going, we're gonna have Dr. Matt on, Dr. Matt Dawson. I met him recently up at the castle. Mm -hmm. Fantastic, he's a sharp guy. Yeah. So he's telling me about it, I'm asking him this question, and he's fired up about it because that's what he's studying. He's interested in it for his kids, for himself. Right. So anyway, we're gonna talk to him about vegetable oil mm. in a little while. We're gonna have him on occasionally to tell us, kind of steer us in the right direction. We may veer off the path here and there, and we're just gonna do that, we're gonna do that. Yeah, just don't be stuck. Okay, he won't watch, he won't tell him. So <laughs> anyhow, in a little while, vegetable oil. Sounds good, right? Vegetable? Yeah. Oil? You would think it's good. Not really. Okay. We're gonna talk about that later. Okay, let's mix up our meatloaf. I'm gonna go two to one, beef to pork. Now, if you'll remember, let's take a look back. We make our own, your sweet Italian sausage. Mm -hmm. Then we're gonna take two cups of breadcrumbs. Now you can do Italian, you can do whatever you want to do. A little flavor won't hurt you. A little basil and oregano really works well in some barbecue. Now before we go to grinding on this, we're gonna take, I don't know, a third of an onion, and we're gonna cut that up really fine. Gotta have some onion there, I mean right. really fine. I like it really fine, because you don't want a big old chunk of onion, because sometimes they don't cook right. up real well in meatloaf. All right, of course, two eggs. Use some salt and pepper. Let's use about a teaspoon and a half salt. And the same with pepper. Now let's take some chili powder. Okay. I'm gonna go over over a tablespoon on it. I wanna taste it. I wanna okay. taste it. And cumin, when I do my chili, I have a lot of cumin in my chili. Good for you. You know, a lot of times you'll want peppers and you want some onions mm -hmm. and some various other other kind of chunky right. vegetable like stuff. So I'm gonna just put some chow chow in there. Good idea. Let's use a heaping tablespoon I like that. of chow chow. Maybe Perfect. just, yeah, maybe just a little bit more. All right, now that'll give some nice color in there. Now I'm gonna end up with my barbecue sauce and I'm gonna put about a half a cup. And then let's go maybe a third of a cup of your favorite beer. You can use dark or light. We don't want it too moist. Ready? Dig. So now imagine, now I'm smelling right now. Oh, doesn't it smell good? It does smell really good. You get the yeasty smell of the beer and the cumin and stuff going. It smells like a, almost a good chili. I like your barbecue sauce idea too. Mm -hmm. It moistens it up and yeah. the flavor goes throughout. You've got like a little bit of sweet. You've got the like onion. That. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and put it in a loaf pan, an already greased loaf pan. We're gonna put that on the smoker as well at the same time that we put the jerky. Okay. 
So I'm gonna go 225 to 250, I'm gonna let it cook for a while. I'd say around, it's got pork in it, so you wanna go at least 160, maybe just a little bit more. The last 20 minutes that you're cooking it, put you another round of barbecue sauce, just brush it on the top, and guess what you got? Delish. You got a week's worth of good eating. That's right. All right, now, like I said in a minute, we're gonna to talk to Matt. But before we talk to Matt, let's make something nice and sweet. That's right. Now ahead. listen, we are never gonna get on the soapbox and say, do this, don't do that, or right. because I am not a soapbox kind of guy. And I like to go get a donut every now and then. Yes, you do. And I'm gonna. We're gonna share that information with you. <laughs> right now, we're going sweet. That's right. <laughs> All right, so we're looking for something we can pop in the smoker. Mm -hmm. Tell me, Mrs. Farmer. This is a double cherry delight. It is, and actually got this from Deanne, a good friend okay, of both of ours. Absolutely. She's got She's great, been on the show before. good recipes no. and good desserts. So we were talking, and I'm like, what could I make this really simple? She was giving me ideas. She makes like a cobbler, but she'll use like peaches and blueberries and put cake on it and some put alate on top. But you got to thinking, let's do cherries, because they have that new cherry alate we could throw on the top of that. <laughs> There's only what, three ingredients? Three ingredients, and I, I like just it. got some canned cherries, the right. tart ones that in water, right. and drained them. And this is simple. I mean, right. this is so simple. It's just, but the taste, oh yes. my. This is a cake mix. You could use yellow or white. I like yellow. So I'm going to do, you want to be my stir? I'll stir for you. Stir it a little bit. Let's and stir it around. Normally I'd have a wooden spoon, but I don't know where those are. Yeah. And a lot of times people just pour the cake on top and then pour the liquid, but even Deanne was saying she found it. She thinks it, it's better when you stir you them up. up. And I agree with her. I think stir it's better. It. And now while you're stirring, I'm going to mm -hmm. add the cherry flavored alate though, because I think that give it more cherry flavor. What do you think? Mm -hmm. That's making it bubble That's up. That's liquid. <laughs> it smells like something you get at the fair right now. Was that easy or what? It was easy. Um, one hour, we'll have to put the rest of it in. All right, All right, so after everything else is done, we can bring that temperature up to 350. Okay. By the time we get everything pulled off, the meatloaf and everything, put this to 350, and you, you're going about an hour and a half? About an hour. About an hour. Over an hour. Start checking in an hour. Yes, in an hour it was done. I pulled it. Mm. The smells are fantastic. But first, we're going to talk to Dr. Matt. We're going to have this segment called Ask Dr. Matt. Matt Dawson. I got a lot of questions for him. That's, I, got I like a lot of, that. And you know what? We're going to talk to If you have a question, I think after you see the segment, you're going to kind of see where we're going here. Right. If you have a question for Dr. Matt, we're going to have a little space on our Facebook page where you can ask him a question. And then we'll take a look at it and we'll pick three or four out. And the next session we have with him, we'll ask, we'll ask him those questions. Good idea. Let's pop this in at 350 and go see Matt. That's right. All right, if I said we had access to a doctor's mind, and if I knew this doctor was fascinated by everything that we put in our bodies, because he sees patients 15 years later, if they've been doing this or that, they should be doing, shouldn't be doing. What if I tapped into this resource on a regular basis and said, hello, Dr. Matt, ask Dr. Matt. I got some questions for you. Would you mind every now and then talking to us? You love this stuff, nutrition, what that does to your body, what this does to your body. Do you not? My mind is yours, so feel free, and I do. I'm tapping in. Everybody knows what you eat matters. I don't think anybody truly understands how important it is, so I'm happy to talk about that. First subject, we use oils in our cooking, so on and so forth. By the very nature of it, you would think vegetable oil, because it says vegetable, is good for you. You told me that's not the case. It's a trick. It's a trick. The word is a trick. It is. Fats are extremely important. Every cell in your body is made up of a membrane that's composed of fats. And that those fats come from what you eat directly. So it's really important what fats you eat. And vegetable oil is one of the most toxic things that you can eat. It's right up there with sugar. And very few people wow. realize that. So tell us what happens when you use vegetable oil that is not good for you. Sure, so all of those cell membranes your body uses that fat, which is a polyunsaturated omega-6 fat, which is not a natural thing for you to eat. And it replaces those cell membranes with that fat, and you, they're basically dysfunctional. So you have dysfunctional membranes when your omega-3 to omega-6 fatty acid ratio is off in your body. So we, that's why we don't actually use vegetable oils here at the kitchen anymore, and I don't have them in my home. What does that do to you over time if you, can, can, if you bombard your body with it? It increases your chances of heart attack, stroke, diabetes, 
all the things that you don't want to have happen to you or your loved ones. How does it affect your, the, just the way you feel overall? That's a great question because your brain is actually, a large percentage of your brain is fat. So it definitely affects your mental capabilities. Brain fog could definitely be because of a really high omega-6 to omega-3 ratio. So, but fats are critical. So it's important to have good fats, not the bad fats. And to define vegetable oils, things like canola oil, uh, which is really made from rapeseed, grapeseed oil, peanut oils, those things are what I consider vegetable oils. There are good choices though, that's the thing. You don't need to have, you don't have to quit eating any oils at all. Fats are important. So if you have to, if you absolutely have to, and we're frying things less and less. Here's the problem with frying. When you fry something, it converts that oil, it, it, it converts it into a trans fat. And okay. we all have heard about the dangers of trans fats. Okay. I'm not gonna tell people to quit living, go ahead and fry, but a extra virgin olive oil is gonna be your best choice. Even extra virgin olive oil, if you take it up past its smoke point, too hot, and fry it, you're still going to get some of that conversion. Really? Um, so the less fried food you eat, the better. Well, extra virgin olive oil from a good source is almost like medicine. It has so many great compounds for you, and it's a healthy thing. So the more of that you can consume, the better. It's kind of the opposite of the vegetable oil. When I add extra virgin olive oil, I usually add it at the end of cooking. I love the flavor, the taste, but if you add it at the end, and don't get it past that smoke point, you're not gonna get those trans fats. So you know, when you cook it is important too, not just what you cook, but when and how, how high is the heat and when you add the fat. So do you oven cook a lot of stuff? You broil a lot of stuff? We do, or steam as well, or cook in a pan with water, like vegetables I'm gonna saute, mainly with water, get them cooked and add the extra virgin olive oil at the end. And even that, you can have good sources and bad sources. Um, more recently that it's actually in the bottle, if you look at the date they put in the bottle, that's going to be better. A dark bottle, because it's not a completely stable fat. If it's exposed to light and heat, then it can convert to those trans fats as well. So if you're interested in becoming more healthy, and I think we all are, and if you, you see these people 30 years in that have really abused these things that we think are healthy, you don't want to see that. No. You see, you'll be seeing less patients. You realize you're cutting out some of your patients in the long term? You okay with that? That would be great. I would rather be optimizing people instead of trying to fix them. Well, we're in a working kitchen. This is a working pantry. This is a working doctor. And we have some working ideas for how to stay healthy. Can we do this again? Absolutely. Thank Hope you, that man. helped. Appreciate it. You're welcome. No vegetable oil. So anyhow, what's this big green bag? Well, let's see, what's in this big green bag? That looks like it might be kale. That looks like it might be greens of some sort. Wow, there's, and there's potatoes and sweet potatoes and leaves. Napa, cabbage. Now you say, okay, wait, look, let's just keep on, let's just dump it all out here. I, all right. So, Community Supported Agriculture, CSA. We're just gonna get a couple cloves out. Just cut the ends off, pop the paper off, as we say. Well, let's go ahead and cut these up into little fine pieces. We're gonna fry some cabbage. Now, who doesn't like fried cabbage? Doesn't smell heavenly. It does. Garlic always Carly's gonna wanna eat that, but she can't have it right now. I would eat that. I know you would eat that. It's yummy. So, while we're cutting this up, let's talk about our macaroni. You need a half a stick of butter, a quarter cup of flour, after you melt mm -hmm. your butter. You just can make your little roux. Then you come back with two cups of warm milk. Then you're gonna add your cheese. Now, here's where it's wide open. What have we been eating lately? Gruyere. Yeah, it's delicious. We got some smoked Gruyere cheese. Two thirds a cup of heavy cream. You want to put a little white pepper that gives a nice taste, a little black pepper. And I like some jalapeno in mine, especially when you put mm -hmm. it on the smoker because it does something magic. And then take about half a box of macaroni. Get that cooking, get that ready to roll, put it all together. Once everything's nice and melty, we can put that in about 325 for about 30 minutes. Now remember, everything's already melted and wonderful. You're just kind of warming everything yeah, up. bringing it together. Bringing the top. All right, let's go ahead and drop our cabbage in. Oh, this is gonna be good. Now, this is really gonna reduce in size, so, so Nick, if you will, go ahead and cut that other. Look at this. That looks good. You smell that? Mm -hmm. If you'll give us a plate, let's pull everything off, and we're about to eat. Yay.
That's a pretty good plate. It's pretty colors. I like it. You did good. You know what? For some reason, I want to try this. So first. do I. Kelly already stole the garlic out of it, except for that so one piece. Color. Wow. That's always good, isn't it? Simple, but it is really good. Mm -hmm. So we got our smoky mac and cheese. We have our barbecue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Saving the best for last. Mm -hmm. Barbecue meatloaf. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is very yummy. Oh. Mm. So many flavors in that. That's really good. You outdid did yourself on that. You know what? That's really good. When you start thinking about things, you think, okay, boring ketchup. Mm -hmm. Why not if you can put on a smoker? Put things in it that, that really mm -hmm. kind of accentuate that. That's amazing. So we got chili powder, we have cumin, we have barbecue sauce, we got a little bit of beer for these. Oh, I like it. It stays moist. You do good. Now listen, it's going to have a little pink color because the way you cook it, mm -hmm. it's done. Temperature's there. Don't say, oh no, it's not done. It is done. The temperature's above 160, mm -hmm. so it's good to go. We want to thank Matt for being on tonight, but we also want to mention that again, it's pretty daggone easy to get on our Facebook page. How do you do this for? You hit like. You're kidding me. No, it's just simple. Hit like. Boom. We've got a bunch of people on there. We want to have more That's to right. talk to, remind you when events are coming up. And before I take this huge bite, we should also say that I had to pull up that recipe. TimFarmersCountryKitchen.com. I That's had to pull right. it up. You can Recipes. pull it up too. All right. Before. Oh, we're going to eat good stuff. We're out of time. Believe it or not, so we got to try. We got to try that. Our dessert, which has been smelling this place mm, up in a I good way. Can't wait way. to try it. That looks so good. Look at that. Should we move it up here? Oh See yeah. It? Oh, look at that. Look at that. I can't wait to try that. Oh, the steam's rolling off of it. Mmm. That's one of the best cherry desserts I've ever had. It's all cherry. Really good. I think I just want dessert. Oh my. How do you describe that? Mm. It's like a really good cobbler, but better. Wow, that's good. Packed show, Mrs. Farmer. Yes, it is. But it's all about good times, good friends, and good eats. I'm starving. Shout out. Let's eat. Yeah, we can eat. Christmas time is right around the corner, and once again, you have to find a gift for that hard to buy for a family member on your list. At TimFarmersCountryKitchen.com, this problem is solved. That's TimFarmersCountryKitchen.com.